Hey, everybody. This is Peter Hafner, Certified Financial Planner and Certified Financial Fiduciary. And thank you for joining me today. This is going to be our fifth video in a series that covers retirement fears and misconceptions. And we've already talked about a number of things, the myth of living off the interest, fear of running out of money, getting stuck on a fixed income. And uh, today I want to focus on stock market volatility and crashes, because the last time we were together, I, I pointed out to you that it is quite likely that if you live long enough in retirement, your cost of living will actually double. And what I mean by that is once you get older and longer into retirement, you're probably going to need twice as much money then as you do when you start your retirement. So the question is, how are you going to double your income after you stop working? And the answer to that is it's the stock market. The stock market is one of the best places. It's one of the only places, normal, average type investors, not institutional investors, not billionaires. Uh, it's where we can go and we can invest our money in such a way where it can outpace inflation. And if you look at this slide here, what it shows is the performance of the Dow Jones Industrial Average from 1983 to 2021 to the present. And what you see is that the average annual growth rate has been close to 9%. And if you recall from the video we did last time, uh, do you remember where inflation is run? You know, most recently about one and a half, maybe 2%. And in the years before that, somewhere around three or three and a half percent. So I hope you can see how if you invest enough money in the stock market, the stock market can protect you from getting stuck on a fixed income. OK, that's why it's so important not to be too conservative with your investments. And this is a trap people often fall into, you know, especially as they get closer to retirement because they're afraid of making mistakes and seeing their portfolio go down. I mean, think about what happened during COVID. Think about what happened during the financial crisis, especially the financial crisis. We as investors got our legs taken out from under us. Right. Stock market was down 50 percent. What the heck are you going to do if the stock market goes down 50% when you're about to retire? We're going to talk about that a little later. But that's what people do. Some A good segment of people is they get scared about this and they get more conservative. But that's a trap. You need to have enough money in the stock market because that is the key to protecting yourself from inflation and getting caught on a fixed income. But the question we have for you today is, how are you going to protect yourself from the stock market? OK, how are you going to do this? And this is what the stock market looked like during COVID. In fact, if we look here, here's the top of the market. That was uh, February or March of 2020. And you can see how much, how devastating the drop was in a short amount of time. That was 34 percent in about six weeks. OK, so just imagine how this is going to feel if you have just retired. So that's what I want to talk about today the stock market. I'm going to show you over the next couple of videos how to protect yourself from stock market volatility, crashes, recessions, and bear markets. First thing I want to show you, though, is I want to give you a little background and a little history on the stock market so you'll have a better idea of what to expect. Because what I find by working with the people I work with is as they work with me for a longer period of time, they just get more comfortable with stock market volatility. And that's a good thing. And you know why it's a good thing? It's because the stock market is always volatile. In fact, what I've got here for you now, it's a chart from JP Morgan, and it goes from 1980 through the present, and it shows the S&P 500. Each one of these bars and the dots underneath it represents data on the S&P 500. And what it shows us is the intra-year declines and the calendar year returns. So the declines are the dots underneath. OK, I'm circling some of the, the lowest points. And what you see here is this chart shows you from 1980 through the present, about a 40 year period of time, the lowest the S&P 500 got in every one of these years. That's what these dots all represent. Now, the bars, what they show is where the stock market finished in each one of these years. So if you look here at this year, the stock market was down 8% at one point, but by the end of the year, it was up 26. Um, 
Here, stock market was down 19% that year, but it was up 27% at the end of the year. Uh, so I hope what you see here is that the stock market is down a lot, right? In fact, the stock market is down at some point pretty much every year. In fact, what they tell us here is that on average, the stock market is down close to 15% every single year. So one of the big takeaways you should have after watching this video is that the stock market's going to be down every year and 10 or 15% or even 20%, that should not rattle you. Okay. That is not a problem. 10, 15, 20% declines don't mean there's something wrong. It doesn't mean the wheels are coming off. That is simply the way the stock market works. And if you're going to be involved in the stock market and most of you better be, so that you can stay ahead of, uh, of inflation, you need to be able to tolerate declines on these kinds of, uh, of these kinds of amounts. Very, very important. Now, the second part of this though, is the second takeaway is even though on average the stock market's down almost 15% a year, most of the time it finishes positive. It finishes uh, up in the black. In fact, in 31 of the last 41 years, the S&P 500 wound up having a positive performance by the end of the year. So what I hope you're going to get by watching this video is you're going to have a better understanding of just what to expect in the stock market. I hope you're going to understand that when you're watching the news on TV, which is seems like it's always alarming and scary, right? And, and it is because the media wants us to keep our eyes on the TV, to keep reading the newspaper, because that's how they sell advertising and that's how they make money, with alarming headlines. So it's all geared up to sort of get us jumbled up inside to, uh, uh, to jumble our emotions. But what I want you to understand is most of the time, it's just that when the stock market is being, seems what might be crazy, it's just the stock market doing what it does. So that's it for today. When we come back next time, I'm going to talk more about the stock market. And this time I want to show you longer term trends. So thanks for joining us. Have a great day.